Template strings feel to me very much like the flagship feature of Python 3.14 and introduce yet another way of creating strings in Python. Specifically, this is now the fifth way to create formatted strings in Python after the percentage syntax, the dot format, f strings, and string.template. However, this doesn't aim to compete with these methods, or at least f strings anyway. It aims to sit alongside and provide additional functionality, specifically that f strings can't. And we'll see what that functionality is when we get into the actual video itself. In this video, I'm gonna go over what they are, how they work, and how you can use them in the real world. Of course, if you found this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's see Python 3.14's flagship feature in action. So to look at it, I'm just going to go into the terminal, run, I'm going to activate the virtual environment as well, and then run the interpreter. Um, so if we set thing here, not thong, <laughs> it's a very different thing. Um, and then we have template is hello, or t string, hello, and then we have our same curly brackets as before. All the same curly brackets as in uh, f strings, I should really say. Press enter, we oh, I've done this. <laughs> I always do this. Um, we have this new template string using this string. And if we were to do template like that, we see that it's actually a template object with strings and interpolations attributes. And this makes more sense if we actually look at the specification itself. So we have a class strings, which is a tuple of string. And this is the actual raw parts of our template string. So in our case here, it's the hello with the space and then the exclamation mark. And we can see that these two parts have been uh, inserted into this tuple. It's almost like, well, maybe this is exactly how it does it, but it's like the, um, the string has been split by the interpolations. And then we just get these different parts here. We then have these interpolations, which are the things inside the curly brackets, basically. So that would be this thing here. Um, and this interpolation is an object, which if we look down, where is it? There it is. Has a value, an expression, a conversion, and a format specification. So the value is the actual value of the, of the interpolation. So in that case, this is the string world. The expression is the name of the interpolation. So this is what's inside the string itself. So in this case, it's thing. Uh, the conversion is used if you were to do something like um, that. So you could still have your um, exclamation mark R, exclamation mark S conversions that you can do. And those go in here. If you haven't provided one, it just goes to none. And then the fourth argument is the format specification, which I have done a video on recently if you want to go look at that. But say if you wanted to do um, something like uh, this to it. You now could, and you have the conversion here. So this allows you to have access to the name, the value, as well as any conversions. So you can uh, change how it looks if you wanted it uh, using the representation, for example, and then change the format specification. So if this meant anything to you, you could use that, or you could uh, come up with your own and just use that. Uh, I don't think it actually checks it. I think it just creates a string out of it. And the, I guess, killer feature behind template strings is that you can use them to intercept these interpolations. So in F strings, these interpolations or expressions were just integrated directly into the string as the string was created. Um, and they're very quick, but it also doesn't allow you to have these extra checks. And this opens you up to certain security problems, which T strings are mainly designed to fix, but I'm sure people are gonna come up with very creative ways uh, of fixing them. But I do want to show you a, a, a real world example of where you may choose to use template strings. And to do that, I'm going to use this example here in this injection.py file. And what this is doing at the moment, so all this bit here is just setting up a database and it's set up in such a way that it completely resets it every time just so we can show uh, changes off a bit quicker. But the only thing I've implemented here at the moment is this change password function which uses an F string currently to update the users to set the password to be password where username equals username. And because we have this F string and this actually doesn't return anything anymore. This was something else. This used to be a select, but it's now an update um, and it commits that change. Um, and it works perfectly fine, but it is insecure as we'll come to see. And I've just got this call here. So Bob and then my secure password. If we were to run, oh, let's actually, <laughs> 
let's get rid of all that and let's um, make the terminal a little bit smaller. There we go. If we were to then run py injection, we would get this database back. And I'm using a DB, um, what's it called? SQLite Viewer extension to do this, by the way. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, but it's really nice uh, thing you can do in case you're wondering what extension I was using. Uh, we have this table with the admin, user, guest, etc. And you can see that Bob has a password, my secure password, and everything has worked just fine. But we can quite easily perform SQL injection on this by going back into injection and uh, copying that and then commenting this one out and doing a very specific string. And this string that I'm going to use in this case is memes because memes and then something like that. So you may be thinking this looks a bit strange, but I'll I'll walk you through why this works. So we have this update user set password equals, and then we have this quote. This quote does make things a little bit uh, more challenging, but we have this password here. So this, uh, whatever we pass here is gonna get added directly to this. So we can set the password to memes, we're just doing this for a laugh. And then we're uh, we're closing the quote, but then we also have this double, uh, this double dash, and this double dash is a comment. So what this now does is update users set password equals memes. And we comment out this where function. And if we run that, we could see that we've injected our database and suddenly everyone's password is memes. This obviously is not the most dangerous thing you can do with SQL injection, um, but it is quite fun. So <laughs> I figured that would be the example I used. Um, and this is where f-strings kind of fall apart a bit because this uh, what we're putting here is becoming just the raw text. You want to use prepared statements and you can use template strings to do that. So I'm going to come down here and then create this function called prepare. And then this would take our template string. And this is typically how you would process them. You would pass them to a callable. So actually we're going to do some imports up here. We're going to do uh, from uh, string dot template lib, which is brand new import interpolation and templates and then we're also going to do from typing import any because we're going to need it um, and you'll notice immediately uh, that pylance doesn't like it at the moment it's not been updated to use this new syntax oops uh, and we're going <laughs> to return uh, a tuple which is going to contain a string and then a dict of string any and we'll talk about what these are in a second so we have parts, which is a list of string, and this will be the, the parts of our string that we then join together later. And then params, uh, which is a dict of string any. And these will be um, the parameters that we pass to our prepared statement. And you can actually iterate over our template string. So we could do for item in template, there we go. And that's just how you iterate over it. We can then check whether an item is either a string or an interpolation. So if it is an instance of interpolation, then we want to uh, perform some operations on this. We can assume that it is probably a variable we're passing through and we want to intercept and make this secure. And we can do this by doing parts.append. Uh, and I'm gonna use the fancy syntax for doing this. Uh, so I can show off that you can use item.expression here. And we can have params uh, item dot expression equals item dot value. And if you're not following what's going on here at the moment, I will uh, have a run through of it after we've uh, implemented it all. Otherwise, we just want to do parts dot append item. And then we also want to strip out um, any single quotes from the end because otherwise our prepared parameter will go inside quotes and it won't work. So we just want to strip them out from this string component here. And then we can return an empty string that joins our parts together. And then we can also just return the params. It is a completely normal callable. There's no need to just return a string or anything. We can return whatever we want out of it. So this prepare function will take our template string. It then sets parts and params, and then it iterates over our template. So the template knows what order everything goes in automatically, and we can iterate over it. And for every interpolation object we come across, so every time we come across this or this, we then want to append uh, something else to the string. So parts will form the finalized string part of it. 
And this colon with the item expression is what we can use. So the item dot expression is the literal word password or the literal word uh, username. And then we can create a dictionary saying that the value that we want for password or username is the item dot value. And that is what we actually pass to the function. And then we can do parts dot append. Otherwise, the reason we do this item dot strip uh, is just because our string would be this. And if it had this quote at the end, um, our item expression here would go inside quotes and it wouldn't work. So we just need to make sure we strip them out. Pretty much all of the time when you're doing something like this, it will start or end with a single quote and we just want to get rid of those. And then finally, we can join the string together to be the actual string. And then we have the query params as well. And this function actually returns the exact arguments we want to pass to connection.execute. So if we comment this out and copy it and re-implement this down here, Instead of using this f string, we can do args equals prepare. And then we have this um, here, but we use a t string instead. And again, PyLance doesn't like it, but it does work, promise. Uh, <laughs> and then that will return um, our string and our, our dictionary. And then we could just pass args to connection dots or cursor dot execute. And now if we run this SQL injected thing, and then we uh, refresh it. We see that everyone else's passwords have been maintained and our password is just the raw string that we passed in. So we are no longer um, injecting SQL into the query. And this is generally how you would typically use template strings. At least this is how the pep talks about it in terms of security purposes. Um, it specifically uses the example of HTML sanitization. I've done um, SQL injection just to put a different example out into the world. I didn't just want to copy an example again. But it is worth keeping in mind that T strings sort of are and aren't strings. They are defined as strings, but they need to be processed before you can print them. Because as we saw uh, in the terminal, I don't know if we'll still have it. I don't think we do. I'll put it up on the screen again so you can see it. If you were to just print it straight out, it prints the string representation of the object itself, which is not the same as the string. So it is something that needs to be processed. It is a template for you to make modifications to later down the line. If you're chomping at the bit to learn more about f-strings than Anthony Wright's code did, a much more detailed 44 minute video talking about them uh, that I'll link in the cards. That's why I'm, I'm just giving a basic overview just to put a different angle out there. Uh, but if you do have any questions, um, feel free to leave them in the comments as well and I will answer them because this is a new feature and I imagine it's going to take some time for some people to, to kind of get their head around it. And if you did like this video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I have done other videos on Python 3.14 features, including the overview of everything that's new. So if you want to see that, you can check out the Python 3.14 playlist in the end cards. And I'll see you next time for whatever we do next.